So today we are taking over Vindolanda Roman Museum. Um, the Romans are kind of a big story when it comes to chickens because although the Romans didn't introduce chickens to Britain, they were responsible for sort of popularising the consumption of chickens. So the Romans are a big story and so we thought it would be great to come to Vindoland at this world famous site and, and kind of take over the museum and weave the chicken story through all of their exhibits. So we've got loads of stuff going on today. I'd seen the Being Human Festival, uh, I'm not quite sure how, but saw it online and really loads of interesting things to do in it and picked a few friends that would like different things to do. My friend Fee that's come with me today keeps chickens. I used to be involved in a community farm, so it was our day of coming out together and uh, sharing some chicken stories and thoughts and seeing all the chicken things that were going on. A friend heard about it and told me about it and I came because I keep chickens and I'm interested in chickens. Uh, well, we're going to come up to Vindolanda anyway uh, and it's, it's give us a brief outline of the chicken nuggets that, that was the... I thought, what's this? What's this? So we're going up to Vindolanda. What's this? Chicken nuggets? Uh, so we, uh, I, read the, I read the little article and I went online, checked it out online as well. Because I read about it in the journal, they said it was uh, happening at Vindolanda and uh, it was uh, about the history of chickens and it appealed to me because I am a poultry chicken. I understand that it's a nationwide thing happening all over the country and I've been onto the website and checked it out. I saw an advertisement in a local newspaper um, and um, I was interested um, in the subject matter. When I tell people that we're studying chickens, their natural response is to go, ha, 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 ha. What we're interested in, though, is looking at where did chickens come from? Because although nobody pays any attention to them, no one knows anything about chickens either. You know, where were they domesticated? Why were they domesticated? How did they spread around the world? These are things that we don't know the answers to. So our project is trying to investigate all of these different strands. So one of the first things that we're asking people to do is kind of reveal their ignorance about what they know about chickens. So one of the activities is for them to tell us where do you think chickens come from and when were they introduced. So we've got some magnetic boards and people are putting up their answers there. In the Roman period, chickens were very free range. Well, we've got these lovely Roman tiles that show that the animals were running all over them. And we're getting kids to, to make some of their own tiles that they can take away too. So that's another activity that's happening in the museum. So one of the stores that we've got is really, really cool. It's looking at the role of chickens in ancient medicine. Because of course in the Roman period, as in most cultures throughout time and space, there was no sort of formal medicine. So what they did was they looked at the natural world, they looked at animals, and chickens were really important in that. I mean, even today people say, eat chicken soup if you're not feeling well. So when we've been looking through the records of Pliny, he's got crazy remedies. If you've got sort of like a, a headache, wear feathers on your head and it will make you better. If you've got an eye ache, put some chicken poo in it and that will make it better. We chatted a lot to people, had a chance to explore lots and lots of different ideas as well that you have about food production, animal welfare, feeding the world, um, our needs and things like this, as well as the sort of representation of um, hens in art and over time. So lots of different things and then bang up to date with um, the Hen Power project and how hens are being used in sort of care homes in terms of sort of uh, supporting older people. I've enjoyed particularly the food aspect has been good. I don't eat meat myself but looking at the uh, blind tasting of the chicken I did it on a visual um, uh, look to see which I thought would be best and it did match quite well to what people same with tasty chicken. Uh, so looking at the, the, the food production and startling facts coming out. We're doing something called stable isotope analysis. The principle of this is that you are what you eat, quite literally. Everything that you eat gets taken through the food chain and leaves a sort of signature in your body, in your hair and in your bones. We can analyse the bones of the chickens and work out what those chickens were eating. I've listened to a lot of people, I've learnt a lot um, about uh, stable isotopes and about ch baby chickens pecking away the inside of the shells and about skeletons and bones and about when chickens came to the UK and also about the commercial breeding of chickens which is interesting. I think it was doing well because it, the, there was a little boy just behind us yeah. so he was, it, 
it sort of hit at all levels. Yeah, it pitched right, young, yeah. Young people and older people. It was enormous space. Yeah. Yeah. It's very heavy. Very I think the history um, probably was interesting. Lady Fanshawe's method, methods of uh, Lady Feather, uh, they were very, very, very amusing, very good presenters. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I think it's just my, my knowledge has been tested because I, I do, I do know quite a bit about keeping hens. But it's interesting to do it as a quiz format, really. So I found the experience enjoyable. Well, I thought it was, um, it was very illuminating. Um, there was a lot of things that. Uh, I thought I knew about chickens that I didn't know about chickens. Um, it was good that there was a, a mixture of kind of sci science and society. I thought it was quite nice that there was a balance. Uh, from my own perspective, I'm a scientist, so it was quite nice. And I thought, you know, as a public engagement exercise, it was very relevant. Your staff, or the people who are running the uh, different things, are very friendly and very engaging and very knowledgeable. So, uh, no, I think it's great. I had no idea that there was so much sort of academic research um, going into our relationship specifically with hens. And to be honest, coming out on the day, I thought hens were just a species that was being used as a hook to bring people in. I didn't fully comprehend that it was totally around hens. <laughs> so, yes, and we, when we got here, we thought, oh, well, you know, few hours and we'll head home and we're now thinking we haven't got enough time to get around everything because there's too much to, to go at. It's interesting because it, it's far more robust than what I expected. Uh, I'm not sure what I expected because again it was less pretty vague in the prospectus of there being human but that was enough to intrigue us to come along so I'm not sure what I expected um, but what I found is some really um, not even intense research, but the, 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 the philosophy behind the research has been really interesting for me. So for instance, we've only been to about four stations and we've ended up talking for an hour with a really interesting university students or professors that have been there um, and gone into all sorts of theories. Just starting at chickens has led us to uh, world poverty and the mental well-being of older people, uh, health of young people, what on earth the world's food choice is going to be. So I'm amazed by the philosophical conversation that's ensued from the little um, uh, uh, the methodologies that, that they'd obviously planned out, the researchers, and all of the, those methodologies have been really interesting, actually. I think the project's brilliant. I think it's really, I, I mean, I love the fact that it's about chickens. And I think it's a, it's a really nice idea to bring together lots of disciplines and lots of different centres and look at chickens from lots of different angles. And, and one of the things that makes you realise is how integral they've been to so much of human life. It's, uh, so it's a great, it's excellent. It's something uh, that's been neglected is now getting some attention. I think it's wonderful. I think they're a good idea because in the long term, I mean, we're finding out so much about like that's it, happy hens. <laughs> that's happy right. Happy hens, yes. or healthier hens. <laughs> so we're healthier because we eat them if we eat them. Yeah. So it's going to have an what, impact on us, yes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We need to find all this out because it's one of the, the major sources of food for us. Isn't it? So yeah. we, uh, we want to find out the best, the best way. I think it's, a, uh, it's definitely the type of topic which is more accessible than say some of the research I make do myself. Mm. Um, it's clearly got implications in terms of you know the fact that we eat you know chickens are a major food of, uh, source of food for us. You know not only the chicken itself but eggs. Um, it has important implications for how we consider you know how chickens are fed, how they're kept, their husbandry. Um, so you know it's it's a really I think it's a really important thing to be able to engage with the public and get these messages across. Yeah, it's interesting the, acad the academic side of things, but hopefully it will bring about some serious changes and research into how we keep. Them. I would have signed up many years ago for it. Bird flu and then 500,000 are actually destroyed.